Woodstock happened 40 years ago, and there's a lot of people in this group who couldn't have been there. And so I want to say something about the background of Woodstock. I went to the library to refresh my memory, and I came up with this book, 1969, Woodstock, the Moon, and Manson. And 1969, four weeks before uh, Woodstock, the, uh, the first moon landing took place. And uh, shortly after that, Manson and his crew of people who have been in the headlines recently, uh, you know, were involved in some killings and there was a sense that the whole hippie movement was ending. That light is a little severe. I'm trying to get it yeah. on your peace symbol, but is that okay with that? Because it was really too dark to even see it. Is that but, okay? I to, but other things that happened at the time, and you have to understand this is the background, Woodstock actually happened at the end of the 60s, in 1969. In my opinion, the 60s really started with the Kennedy assassination. And that shook a lot of people up. That happened in November 1963. And at that time, I had been writing for a little Mexican-American newspaper in Los Angeles. And uh, in the summer of 63, I wrote an article that Vice President Johnson didn't like and he sent me information that he didn't like it. And when he became president, when Kennedy was assassinated, one of the first things he did was to send the FBI out to my employer and got me fired. And that's when I started the free press because up to that point, I was just living an ordinary life. I'd been a machinist and a tool maker and uh, was teaching classes on socialism and uh, living a very quiet life and all of a sudden the long arm of Washington reached out and tapped me on the shoulder and I decided that I couldn't just stand by anymore and be a quiet person and I was unemployed this isn't, of course, a story about the free press. I want to get back to Woodstock in a moment. But I, the free press started with a $15 investment. I sent out two letters to writers and to possible advertisers. At the end of the first week, I had $200 committed in advertising. And it was enough to print the little paper I went to the KPFK Renaissance Fair, and uh, we had 5,000 copies printed. I sold 1,000 copies, and all of a sudden I had $1,000, and then people gave me office space, and we went on and on and on. And, uh, and the Free Press eventually, because most of you don't know about it, uh, became a very large paper, 125,000 paid circulation. Um, I employed about 150 people. I had a chain of bookstores, free press bookstores, and uh, a printing plant, a big newspaper printing plant. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about the history, because I realize a lot of people here don't know about it. I published the names and home addresses of all the narcotics agents in California. I'll bring that out. I, got, uh, I was sued by the state of California for $25 million, and the agents sued me for invasion of privacy, and I won all the lawsuits. But, uh, Eventually, the legal cost was so much that I went bankrupt for $3 million. But I want to come back to, to Woodstock, because that's really the purpose of this. I just wasn't planning to say anything at all about the free press. 
except that it seemed a little bit appropriate to do so. Uh, and I'll say a few more things at the end in my evaluation of Woodstock about the free press. On August 9th of this year, the, LA, the New York Times ran a big article on Woodstock called From Woodstock to Sarah Palin. <laughs> to kind of, and there were over 200 responses on the New York Times website, which I read today. And they were all over the place. There were people saying Woodstock wasn't important because it was really just a commercial event. The people who produced Woodstock put two and a half million dollars into producing it. It wasn't a fly-by-night proposition at all. At all. Uh, what, no, what was remarkable was the list of 32 bands, I think it was 32 bands, and the, uh, the bands were paid a lot of money. Like, for example, it was noted in, these, in the New York Times articles and the commentaries that the group The Who was paid $12,000 to perform there. And uh, Abby Hoffman, who came to the place and made such a fuss that Tom Townsend busted his guitar over him, uh, Abby was paid $10,000 to stay away. <laughs> but, uh, at least, I, I don't know that for a fact, but that's been published. And uh, so part of the comments about Woodstock were, it didn't matter, it was a big concert, there was a lot of money involved, and other comments spoke about the spirit of Woodstock, the fact that almost 500,000 people came together in a peaceful concert, and there were no episodes, and there was a sudden immediate creation of a city that lasted for four days under very difficult circumstances, and uh, there was peace and love. And some of the comments of the New York Times website were the person said, I was there, and I became a philosophy professor, and I lived with the spirit of Woodstock, and that's what I've transmitted uh, to all of my students. And Woodstock was a very important part of my life. Another person commented that the slogan of Woodstock, which came out, which was actually an earlier slogan, was, don't trust anyone over 30. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, when Woodstock took place, Jack Weinberg, who was the first one who said that, that statement, worked for me as a reporter. And Jack, just to give you a sense of the period, uh, Jack was a free speech leader at Berkeley before he came to work at the Free Press. He got arrested as a result of making an unauthorized speech. And the police couldn't take him away because thousands of people surrounded the police car. And the police car stayed there. For, and that was kind of the, the sentiment and spirit. And uh, indeed, don't trust anyone over 30. Actually, I, sh I should clarify, Jack said it only because of the situation in Berkeley where there were a lot of uh, people hanging around the campus, older people, perpetual students, and he was really referring to them. He wasn't referring to everybody over 30, but it was interpreted that way.